Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for January 2024. Uh, I'm a little bit sick today, but thankfully I have Yella helping out with the update. So I just want to show you um, this little thing that I like this month, and then I'm going to let Yella take over. Uh, but this month, we finally fixed a, a long-standing annoying bug, which was that the idle task was visible in the system monitor. So um, I find that it looks much nicer if you don't show uh, sort of, uh, oh, it's the idle task is taking 99% of the CPU when the system is mostly idle. Instead, we just hide it. Uh, it's It was a regression, and it's finally been fixed. And I think it was Tim Ledbetter who fixed it. So thank you, Tim, for doing that. Uh, and there was one other thing that I really liked, which was in Hack Studio. Um, let's see if we go and edit some C++. Um, OK, did I make it upset? No, there we go. Uh, then the locator now uh, allows you to do fuzzy searches. So I can search for the container struct here, for example, um, but I can also type on NUR, and it should be able to fuzzy match container. Yeah, exactly. So I think the Sam added the fuzzy matching to the container and did a bunch of other work on Hack Studio this month as well. So thank you, Sam, for keeping the Hack Studio dream alive. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to let Yella talk about a lot more changes. So over to you. Well, hello, friends. Let's dive into January in Serenity OS. First off, I'd like to show you some improvements in Lib Graphics. Uh, Nico has worked a lot on uh, JPEG support and color channel support within Serenity OS. And one of the things that they did was uh, improve support for our JPEGs with CMYK channels. So for example, this is a PDF and within this PDF, uh, JPEG is placed where um, we used to render uh, the JPEG, I believe uh, like this, or maybe even like the, the lower right image here. Uh, but as you can see, we now correctly render this image in all its glorious color channels. So really nice work on that. Um, there are a lot of ways that images can be configured and set up with different color channels, information, metadata, um, and having uh, all that support inside our lib graphics is really neat. Uh, Lucas also worked on uh, extracting metadata from our JPEGs and TIFF files. So for example, here I have a JPEG file uh, that contains EXIF metadata tags. And if you go to the properties of, of such an image, you will find in the image tab uh, some basic metadata information. So I believe what we do now is we support uh, a number of uh, uh, common tags that we uh, show here if they're present in the image file. So a really nice addition there. So thank you, Lucas. And Lucas also worked on TIFF support. So TIFF is not a file format that you uh, see a lot nowadays, but it used to be very commonplace, uh, especially when scanning documents, for example. But to me, it's surprising that it's it's a pretty complex format. It supports a lot of different features. And um, well, if, if you have a lot of features that you need to support in a file format, a lot of things can go wrong. So of course, we have all these different test cases. And uh, to me, it's really funny that we have this funny test image in all kinds of formats, as you can see here, uh, that we now support. So uh, really nice work there, Lucas. So thank you. Um, and one thing I'd like to highlight here is uh, Krita, which is a application, a KDE uh, application uh, on Linux, um, probably also on other operating systems that I believe generated an uh, invalid or a very peculiar TIFF image that we now also, also support. So that's really nice as well. So really cool work in uh, lib graphics there. Then on to Sam. Sam worked on uh, a number of things, amongst which uh, the hex editor. Uh, so hex editor is our tool to um, basically show files in hexadecimal format like this. 
and uh, he made a couple of changes and I think uh, a couple of cool ones are these. So for example, if I were to edit this file, so uh, let's, let's make this uh, a different letter altogether and let's make this uh, different as well. You now see that uh, the letters or the byte positions that I've edited are shown here in bold. So it's immediately clear to the user uh, what has been edited. So really nice feature there. Thank you, Sam. And uh, a bigger entry that he added to uh, Hex Editor is the ability to add annotations. So for example, let's say you're debugging a certain file or you're looking through the structure and you'd like to um, make an annotation at a certain position in the file. So for example, uh, let's say that this is interesting. I can add an annotation, um, add a comment here. Uh, I can give it a specific color. Et voila, uh, we now have an annotation and I can do this uh, multiple times. So for example, let's uh, do it here as well. Uh, make a different annotation in a different color. And the neat thing is this isn't just in this session of Hex Editor, you can actually go in and save these annotations um, in a file. And then the next time when you come back to the readme file, I can just load my annotations back up again. And given that the file hasn't changed, they'll probably be in the correct location as well. So very, very nice features. Thank you, Sam. Next up, GML. We have had GML compiler uh, for some time now, uh, originally written by uh, Kleinus, I believe, uh, who made sure that we had a way to take the language that we use to define UI widgets and layouts, um, which is a language called GML. We use it for a lot of applications and take this language and compile that to um, header files that we can then use at compile time for our applications. So uh, instead of uh, passing these files at runtime and making them available as, um, as, as objects that you need to pull in, we can now actually compile our applications using uh, static references to all the widgets and layouts that we have to find in these files. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, we uh, have all these applications that we then need to convert from one format to another. And um, to be able to do so, um, there are basically two things that we need to do. At one end, we need to improve support for GML compiler. So GML compiler needs to uh, properly understand uh, everything there is uh, to understand about the, the GML language. Um, it needs to be uh, uh, useful in a way that we can actually statically compile our applications against it. Um, and um, that, that of course needs some maintenance and improvements. So in January, a lot of things have happened with Gmail as well, uh, where uh, there were some steady improvements by uh, Dan, by uh, Kleinus, by uh, Mr. Unix. And a lot of applications received uh, a, a porting to a Gmail compiler. So for example, uh, we have uh, Hearts, which now uses the Gmail compiler. Uh, the, the browser settings uh, make use of that. Um, the calculator, which I just showed you, uh, uses that. Um, I believe uh, we have a calendar, which now uses Gmail compiler. So um, some benefits by using Gmail compiler um, are that we statically check some of the things that are in those Gmail files, whereas previously uh, we would be depending on the parser giving us the right output and, and giving us some errors if anything was wrong. And in a lot of case, cases, uh, it did not do so. So having the Gmail compiler, uh, compiler in place is helpful in that way. So thank you all. And finally, uh, uh, you uh, had a number of updates uh, to the UI that I'd like to show you and uh, some of them I really like. Uh, for example, uh, what they did was uh, introduce full screen support in a number of applications. So for example, if I open up Pixel Paint, um, <clears throat> I can now go to View and click full screen or press the F11 key. And I now have a full screen view of Pixel Paint. So really nice 
feature there. Um, the same goes for a lot of other applications. For example, uh, SQL Studio has received the same treatment. Really cool. And what you also did was introduce uh, a lot of keyboard shortcuts for the menu here. So a lot of these menu items did not have uh, hotkeys or shortcut keys and um, introducing them here just really puts the cherry on top. That, that makes it really nice, so thank you. And the final thing that you did was uh, make sure that we now have the correct name for the browser. Uh, and our browser is called Ladybird here in the quick launch bar. So thank you, you. Uh, all small things uh, lead to huge improvements over time. So thank you very much.